Today we're talking about the big three in gaming, Nintendo, Sony, and Microsoft. And we're talking about their biggest failures. Of course, because there's no real week besides these two weeks coming out, they do something more interesting, something more fun. What about the biggest failures of a console? One of them doesn't really have any huge, massive, colossal failures, but the other two do. Nintendo is the first one. Nintendo is the longest running in the business. Nintendo is actually Nintendo's fault PlayStation didn't even exist to begin with. But we'll get to them later. And how they were how and about one console that they released was a big failure. But Nintendo is often associated now the Nintendo Switch, which has been hugely successful. The best on console is still the DS. With 155 million copies. But that hasn't always been the case. Nintendo has a couple of consoles that didn't really take off. Off. And. The first console. That was a failure as we know. Is the Wii U. The Wii U is the worst selling Nintendo console besides the Virtual Boy. Nobody has to explain why the Virtual Boy is a failure. No one has to explain that. But, the Wii U is Nintendo's worst selling console. It has only sold 13.56 .50, million copies. A amount that the PS5 and Xbox Series X and S are likely to pass. This was an absolutely failure of a console. It sold worse than the GameCube. Again, back in the day when the GameCube released, gaming was not as big as it was. It was really because of the PS2 gaming really became popular. But any other two consoles still, rem still remained these consoles, both the Xbox and the GameCube. And both consoles are still relatively successful in their own rights. But, the Wii U sold abysmally. It had no games, besides Nintendo's games, and even Nintendo gave up on, on it after 2013 when the Nintendo Switch came out, and eventually the 3DS. The 3DS, which sold approximate, it still is considered the worst selling ha Nintendo handheld in history, with only 35 million. Again, but the 3DS had a rough start with its abysmal pricing range. And the Nintendo Switch is now the second is now one of the best selling Nintendo handhelds with 89 million. 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 But the Wii U it tried to be something it wasn't, which was the Nintendo Switch. Ninten Nintendo wanted to make a hybrid console. But you couldn't. The problem with the Wii U is its horrible marketing, and you couldn't really take your gamepad anywhere else outside the range of the Wii U. I own a Wii U. It wasn't that bad of a console, but nobody wanted to buy it because because people confused with the Wii. It had no real. There was no real reason to buy it unless you like Nintendo games, and the indie games was do which did release on the Wii U. And third party companies stubborn or abandoned the Wii U after how poorly the game sold on the Wii U. And because the much more powerful PS4 and Xbox One came out and destroyed the Wii U. So, yeah, the Wii U was toast from the start. And no surprising, it did a Wii. The next console from the Nintendo lineup that did not too great was the GameCube. I know that I know we mentioned the GameCube before, but the GameCube didn't really do too well, considering the fact that it released against the PS2. The whole reason why the GameCube didn't do too well is because of the PS2. It's the same reason why the Xbox only sold 24 million copies, because again, Xbox was trying trying to become a a new brand name, which did really well in the next generation after that, despite still ended up being the worst selling in that generation. It's still considered a legendary console in that in its own right. And everybody did well in that generation. 
but the generation before the 360, PS3, and Wii, and of course PSP vs. DS, the Xbox didn't, and GameCube were kind of just like the niche consoles. They were like these sideline consoles, but the GameCube is still considered as one of Nintendo's best and most underrated consoles. So, with its games being memorable to this day, like Melee, Pikmin, Animal Crossing, and you know, Mario Kart, Double Dash, the best Mario Party games, and many more. So the GameCube, unlike the Wii U, had games that people actually liked. And also, during the Wii U era, Nintendo put a bunch of crappy experimental games on the Wii U. Like Star Fox Zero, Paper Mario Color Splash, Mario Party 10, and of course, let's not forget Animal Crossing the Bebo Festival. Nintendo is it's kind of Nintendo's fault why the 3DS did horribly in the second half of its lifespan. Ban. We were using games like Metroid Prime Federation Force and stuff like that. Games that instead they could release the other game and then they started releasing games that people actually wanted to buy after the Switch came out, except for Hey Pikmin. Man. Man. And they finally released a truly portable game in Pikmin 3 Deluxe. But now let's go, but yeah, and of course let's not get into the Virtual Boy. There's already hundreds of videos of why the Virtual Boy is a failure, and why it's Nintendo's worst console ever made. So we don't have to get into that mess. And yes, even consoles that had slow starts like the, the 3DS, this, and consoles that were disadvantaged from the start like the N64 still did relatively well. Despite everybody saying they had the stalled for the N64, it vastly sold far worse than the PS1. Which is surprising, considering the amount of people who say they grew up with N64, which is just so laughable. Now let's get to Sony. Sony has released 5 home consoles and 2 handheld. Every Sony home console has done relatively well. Well, from the PlayStation all the way to the PS5. Yes, there are some questionable things going behind the scene of the PS5, but it's actually still roughly selling in wide with the PS4. And the Xbox Series X and S is selling roughly in wide of the Xbox One. So, now we have what console Sony released was a failure. Well, that is the PS Vita. Yep, this thing exists. The PS Vita is basically Sony's failed console. They released it in 2011, and it was the much more powerful alternative to the 3DS. But why did it fail? Because Sony basically just gave up on the console. That's essentially why the PS Vita failed. Sony just said, fuck it, we're not making this console, we give up on this console. And it's a real shame that they gave up on this console so quickly. It basically rivaled, it was basically much more powerful than smartphones. You could have had it be like the console that was basically the portable console, which is the Steam Deck basically is now. But Sony basically just gave up on this console, which is a real shame. Even Nintendo didn't give up on the Wii U until 2016 and 2017. Dean. But Sony essentially just gave up on the PS Vita, which it sold relatively well in the beginning. It sold relatively well in the beginning. Games like Call of Duty doing well, games like Assassin's Creed Unsorted, and of course games like Minecraft doing extremely well, and it's the reason why Minecraft is popular in Japan to begin with. But, nonetheless, this console was a failure. Okay. And Sony is likely not going to make a successor to the PS Vita. I think Sony should try to give a portable PlayStation console a chance again, and actually put games on the like of the PSP. The PSP was relatively popular. It sold extremely well. Why did Sony just drop the ball on this one? Nobody knows why, and no one will ever know why. Sony just dropped the ball on the PS Vita. Why did they just abandon this console so quickly? Imagine if that's how they treated the PS5. Five. Five. <clears throat> Five, and they said, oh, nobody wants to buy a console. We'll stop making games to it and move on to PC. See, forever, and not release games for a console anymore. That would be a stupid decision, basically, by any company to do.
but it's the truth. And now what is Microsoft's biggest failure? What is Microsoft's biggest failure? The thing is, Microsoft consoles have done all well. Yes, people say, oh, Xbox One's a big failure. But it really wasn't. It still outsold consoles to the SNES, N64, Sega Genesis, and N64, which are all considered classic consoles. And we're all you can say, and yeah, it still sold half of the PS4 for because again, it it wasn't really popular outside of America, and it wasn't very popular outside of, of course, yeah, USA. But Microsoft hasn't really had a failed console. Yes, the Xbox only sold 24 million copies. But again, Microsoft was trying to find a home for itself. They they didn't understand how game how consoles really worked. Worked, and even Bill Gates was losing money on the Xbox, the original Xbox box, and. But they, but still was a model of success for them. It still sold well, and it still had some really well remembered games. So yes, the Xbox, the first Xbox, is technically the worst selling console. We'll see if the Xbox Series X and S sells worse. But it seems that Microsoft is actually not dropping the ball like people expected them to do this console generation. So we'll really wait to see how they do in the future. We'll see if Microsoft drops the ball again. And even then, Microsoft, like with Nintendo, the, the PDS, they dropped the ball at the beginning. Nobody wanted an Xbox One. But Nintendo, but Microsoft said, okay, you know, we're being stupid, so we'll, we'll sell our console. Okay, the correct way. Okay. <clears throat> Which is why the Xbox One still became a relatively big success for Microsoft, and yeah, they're really going to try to do that better this generation. Even try to do better in markets they historically did horrible in, like Japan, and again, France, and, and Germany, and of course, India, and other countries where they historically did horrible. But yep, that's ever, but yep, technically Microsoft's biggest failure was the original Xbox, only selling 24 million copies, but it had still a pretty big legacy for its games, being the, fir being the first console to really have online, <clears throat> and it was kind of a more nice console compared to the PS5, PS2, and the, and the GameCube also existed. But, yeah, the first Xbox is Microsoft's technically biggest failure. They never released a handheld before. So we can't really say, oh yeah, they released some random handheld during the 3DS era, and that flopped and nobody bought it. No, it did. The first Xbox did the worst. And... <clears throat> And even then, some of these consoles near the bottom of the list still have pretty big legacies. Sees, for example, the Virtual Xbox, the GameCube, Atari 2600, Sega Genesis, N64, and even stuff like the Sega Saturn and Dreamcast still do. So yeah, there we go about this list. So, yep, every console company has had their failures and successes. Nintendo having the biggest with the Wii U. You basically throwing away an entire console generation. Will you we, 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 and again every company and this might be another generation like the like the seventh generation of consoles. Well every console does well regardless as well. But I don't really think the PS5 will be and the Xbox Series X and S will be as memorable as the P60 and PS3. Both of those consoles having libraries of classic games. We'll really wait to see in the next couple of years if these consoles really live up. Or is next set or are consoles doomed forever. But, so yeah, that's basically it. Goodbye.